Some of these companies are larger than states. It wasn't that long ago that I remember that um, Apple hitting a trillion dollar market valuation. Mm -hmm. Now it's at three trillion. Yeah. It what is that? Huh. That tells you something and that, that these the, some of these companies around the world are larger than states they actually represent um a political force and so there is some kind of a change afoot and what that means to society is not my business but what does that mean to the markets my instinct is it's it's going to add greater volatility to the markets. And by the way, volatility doesn't mean the markets go down. It just means that the markets are volatile. They can go up and down very quickly. And so my instinct is in this case that if, if we allow these large companies to get even larger, um, it does create some systematic problems for the world, but it does alleviate a lot of other things and I think the net net of it all would be generally positive over time. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, you're you're equating what we're seeing now with an AI bubble, if we're going to call it that, uh, with the dot com bubble from from 20 some odd years ago. And uh, I was only uh, I was I didn't know the first thing about the, the market back then. Uh, I was in school still. I didn't know anything about the stock market, but I but I remember that. I remember hearing that on the news and it being a big deal and everyone panicking. Um, and uh, and it seems like we're kind of in that uh, that that moment of like maximum hype right before the, the bubble bursts, uh, similar to 2007, similar to 2000. The, we're, we don't know if this is going to create look when bubbles come, if this is a bubble, they last a long time. And remember, it's you no matter how much you think the market can go up, the market can always surprise you. And the main thing I think investors have to understand is you don't chase a market right. ever. It's, if you miss something now, you can always revisit it. I've learned in my life that even if people were to, I'm not saying we do this or because we just work with math, but I can tell you that over time, when you follow rules, and decisions made um, that are done so in a calculated way, you're more than likely going to have a better experience than doing something where you have some fear of either missing out on a rally or some fear that if you don't buy something now that has gone down so much, it's going to rally right back up and you'll miss that as well. Yeah. Right now, um, since the market's gone up and it's gone up with only seven stocks, I think your choice is if you buy the market now, the stock market now, the S&P, it's almost like saying I'm willing to pay, you know, for Netflix that has gone up 270 percent or in one or sorry, 170 percent in one year. No, I I that's a chase. And if you buy the S&P, you're also buying that because it has such a huge representation in the S&P. My recommendation is you wait, you'd be surprised what happens and all it takes is just a few months and you can see that the market could look completely different, in which case these things all bear out. Yeah, the key, key word of the day is patience. Patience, patience, patience. Uh, don't give in to, to the FOMO.